FightHype.com here with Max Kellerman. Max, uh, I, I, something I thought about just as I saw you right here at this arena before Hopkins Taylor won, you said uh, Hopkins, uh, sometimes fighters accrue little advantages so they pay off in the end. Like a chess champion. Do you see that's what Wilder does? Is no. that what, okay? I see that's what Fury does. I see. I don't see Wilder accruing small advantages over time. I see Wilder with an eraser, so he was able to get a late start. Um, I, I think his skills are underrated just because they're not classical skills. He ain't hit that much. Number one, because people don't want to take the risk because he's such a big puncher. But number two, because he has a way of avoiding punches, even if it's not, even if you can tag him clean here and then he has his own way of doing it and and the fighter he reminds me a lot of actually not stylistically but when you consider it is Rocky Marciano Rocky Marciano short guy who got low and everything right very different than Wilder but Marciano picked up boxing very late he was like you know 20 years old he's very late in his career was a devastating puncher but considered kind of a, um, not a fraud, but like a, 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 a product of hype. Mm -hmm. And built. he was very carefully matched. But over time, he learned what to really kind of hone his own technique. And he wound up an undefeated champion. Um, and Deontay also was brought along very carefully at first against a lot of stiffs. But at a certain point, through repetition and through training, and because he has such big power in the right hand, you could see as a more finished product, he has his own way of avoiding punches. He's long, he uses Speed his too, arms. right? Speed too. He's fast, mm -hmm. and his power keeps guys honest. So, no, I don't see him as an advantage accruer, like a chess champion. I see him as a, as a home run hitter. You know, he can make, you can be down three runs in the ninth, but if they're the bases, you know, with Deontay, the bases are always loaded, and he's sitting on a fastball. Is Fury serious when he's talking about being aggressive, and, and why in the world would that be a good idea? How could that work for him? Oh, I, I, could, I could see how it works. Number one, Deontay is strong, but long, 6'7", and has, what was the first fight, 212 pounds? Mm -hmm. Like, that's very, very light. Although he's saying he's coming in 230. He so, claimed, yeah. but when he said he was, you know, at one point he's bulking up, he came in at 217 for one fight. I mean, he's such a puncher, and he has such internal stuff. Like, the only dudes who give up 30 pounds and chase guys in the history of boxing... Mike Tyson could give up weight and chase the other guy around the ring. So could Holyfield, by the way, for different reasons. Um, Jack Dempsey could. Um, uh, Marciano could, though he didn't fight a lot of big guys. Joe Frazier could. Uh, uh, Jimmy Wilde, who was a flyweight. Pacquiao, though he wasn't giving up <laughs> weight, he was just, it was like he was giving up size. Mm -hmm. He was moving up. Wilder does that. He, however, because guys are scared, they give him distance. And at distance, this dude has those long levers he can let go. Mm -hmm. But if you crowd him, he now has to create space. And to create space against a guy who's a, actually, Tyson Fury's a polished infighter, surprisingly, because of his height. And with the fact that he's not a big puncher, to create space, you also sometimes have to push off. You have to have a strong base. And it's not like Wilder is like a, a big-legged fighter. You know, he's a long, spindly guy. So, But how does so, he get on the inside without those avoiding those well, landmines? That's, that's the danger. Right. you gotta, you got you got to get through the danger zone, which is a big risk. And we'll see if Tyson Fury actually does it. But he's found out in the Valine fight when he was down an eye. It was kind of a brilliant strategy when you think about it. Well... I have one eye, he has two. But if we both have no eyes, we're even again. Mm -hmm. So he went on the inside so in close that it's not about vision, it's about touch. And he and I think he kind of fell in love with that a little bit. You know, as Ali did with rope dope because as you get older, it's actually in a weird way less work. Like like the way you would think, but it's more dangerous. But these guys aren't scared. Right. But like you think of Arturo Gatti, when he was young, it was it was in a way it's it sounds obnoxious because the, he show you know taking punches is such a hard way to make a living, but the discipline and mental energy that it takes to box the way Arturo Gatti did as a young guy is harder in many ways than slugging away like he did as an older guy. But what he found out was, oh, I can do this. Why not? This and the good fan, at. and by the way, you get rewarded. The fans like it more. Mm -hmm. So so I think Tyson Fury found that out in the Valine fight. And for certain reasons, as I mentioned, because just the crowd, Deontay, and everything, it makes some logical sense. 
and I think also he kind of liked it. It's probably easier than having to box at distance and avoid all those bombs when the guy's a long-armed puncher who can now throw more big bombs at you. It's easier to get inside and, and you know, where the guy can't really, you know, with, with Deontay's reach, can't really generate the power, you would think. And lastly, Max, uh, it's funny, you know, you talking about these are risks. This is what a big fight. I remember you saying that for Pacquiao, Marquez for, and we got the best fight in the series. Do you think we get a knockout and that this fight is better than the first fight was? Yeah, this is what I was trying to Stuff to say. This is what I'm hoping doesn't happen. I'm hoping the eye doesn't open before the fourth round and we get a technical decision or a no decision or something like that. That would be a disaster. It could happen. That would be a disaster. Um, as my predecessor at HBO used to say, Larry Merchant, boxing is the theater of the unexpected. It's one of the all-time great quotes. Um, I think there's a chance you get a knockout either way. I think that usually in rematches, you get something that has some resemblance to the first fight. Some, you know, like I saw in the first fight Tyson Fury win a decision and get robbed and get a draw. Something like that maybe in the, in the rematch too because quiet rounds that we give to Fury because it seems like he's controlling the action, if you really concentrate, maybe there's really nothing to choose from and maybe a judge just likes the fact that Deontay's coming forward. So let's say there are three rounds like that and then Tyson wins you know, a bunch of other rounds more decisively, but then, but then Wilder knocks him down once or twice and gets those two or three point rounds. You wind up with a close decision again and, and Wilder could get it again. One of the interesting things about this fight, or one of the most compelling things going in, is it's a rematch of a terrific, dramatic first fight. It's a contrast in styles. And anything could happen. Because heavyweight boxing is not like, it's not proportional the way like welterweight boxing is. Well, 147 pound guy hitting 147 pound guy. Same as a 250 guy hitting, a, no it's not, it's not the same. The human body can only take so much force. And the force that a 250 pound man can generate, 270 pound man, is just different. So Tyson Fury's not known as a big puncher and Deontay Wilder could mock him, but if he gets one off, he gets his body behind it, you gotta go if he hits you right. And Deontay's power is absurd, it's, it's nuclear. So you really could get a knockout either way. Um, and yet we've seen Fury rise from Wilder's power, so you could still see some, a fight that lasts the distance. And we've seen Deontay buzzed against Ortiz, who's a devastating puncher, and shake it off and come through and win by knockout. I could see a decision going either way. I could see a knockout either way, genuinely. I could see a fight where Tyson Fury moves to the inside as he claims. I could see a fight where in trying to do so, he gets caught and not cold. I could see a fight where he actually gets in. But Deontay surprises us. Oh, where'd this inside game come from Deontay? just on will and kind of tenacity. I could see Deontay creating space, like, oh, he, he, told, he gave me a little advance warning. So I've been practicing, you know, one or two, they had it in my mind. Let me just make this one move and create some space. I could see um, a, a fight where Fury's, when it comes down to it, doesn't want to take that risk and boxes at a safe distance and outclasses him. Well, Larry like, did, Lots of things can happen. You, you brought up the, I'm sorry, Max, but you brought up the great Larry. He did say also, when you talk about retirement, you got one foot out the door a little bit, and, and apparently Fury has said some of those things. Is any, any reason to pause on that? And nah, I don't, not in this case, because like we saw Mayweather talk about retirement and then actually retire. He was still beating everybody. Like, you know, the game has changed a bit. You're making more money. Yeah, you make, <laughs> the, the money has changed and also the competition at heavyweight has changed. There aren't that many good heavyweights. The top is very good right now. But, but if you look at Tyson Fury, he has a win against Vladimir Klitschko when he was still champ. He has the draw that I thought he won against Deontay Wilder, but what else does he have on the resume? You know, SS at Cunningham, it's a good win. He got off the floor. Deontay Wilder has two wins against Ortiz, the Stavern decision when Stavern still had something left, okay, mm -hmm. and the draw against Fury. Very excellent stuff at the top of the resume, but not much, it's not a deep resume. Mm -hmm. Actually, Anthony Joshua has the deepest resume out of all those guys. And that's, that's um, modern boxing at that weight class mm. because the best smaller athletes who are tough can still make money in boxing. The best 
big athletes who are tough play in the NFL for the most part right. and fall down to boxing. They had an injury to the knee in high school, they become boxers. They got a late start, they become boxers. So, so I think the game has changed somewhat, and sometimes they may be thinking about retirement, but that doesn't mean they've taken a ton of wear and tear. It means they've made a ton of money and, and don't want to go through, you know, tor torturing themselves in training camp 10 more times. Thanks so much, Max. I mean, I just want to say thanks so much. You, you look very tired. You're the hardest working man in sports. And just I just want to say this for people watching. Max obviously doesn't get paid off this. He makes great money on ESPN, so he doesn't even need to give us yeah, the but, time but here. You, so I thank see you, you waiting for me for a half hour. Yeah. So I see you. I see the hustle. Right. I appreciate that's, it. That's why I got it. That's it. <laughs> All right.